What's up? Hope everyone's having a good, happy New Year's Eve and is ready for a new year and another video in the series we like to call Underrated Throwers. Today we got Philip Milanovov. I can't pronounce the names. He's from Belgium. He's the silver medalist at the 2015 World Champs, silver medalist at the 2016 uh, European Champs, and uh, is a 67 meter discus thrower. And I won. I think he's underrated one because I don't think a lot of people really paid attention to the 2015 World Champs. Um, it was just kind of like I don't know, a little boring. Well, I shouldn't say boring, but like, especially the men's discus was probably really weak in my opinion. Uh, the javelin, the men's jab was actually pretty crazy. Uh, Julius Jago won. Um, with an, I think a 93 meter throw, which was crazy, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I just wanted to highlight this guy right here, um, and I think he deserves a little flowers because I don't think a lot of people want to know who he is, he's kind of obscure, I shouldn't say obscure, that sounds kind of mean, um, he's been injured and plagued with injury, so that's probably why you haven't really heard of him, yo, he's also a 2016 Olympian, uh, he made the final as well, he didn't medal, but... He made the final, which is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to highlight, because I think he does a lot of unique stuff and some and a really weird finish. So, I wanted to highlight that. So, let's just watch. We'll speed a couple times. Now, I both like and dislike this throw. And, well, his throw in general. All his throws pretty much look the same as they should with someone who throws 67 meters. You know, that's a sign of consistency, which he is. Which is actually surprising considering his finish. But we'll talk about that later. Um, So, let's get into this. So, let's see. So, it turns. And he does something really weird out the back. It's kind of like... A high, with his uh, left leg, I mean. He kind of does like a hybrid like Robert Harding and Sarah Minton kind of thing. Where like, he turns and he kind of gets on the outside of his foot like Harding. Um, and then just, r actually this is exactly like what Harding does. Where like he gets on the outside of his foot so he's not really turning on the ball of the foot. But then what that does is it gets it super turned really quick. So his knee is really turned right here. And it allows him um, to speed up his legs really quick. Uh, way more past his upper body. So what that does is now he doesn't... Doing that, you don't have you can go as fast as you want with your upper body out the back. Because you will never... Because doing this, you won't uh, exceed the speed that your legs are going. So, that's a perk of it. I personally don't like that. But, I mean, people do it and throw far. So, that's just something he does. So, it's an individualistic thing. I don't know if I would copy that. Um, as you can see from uh, me playing this full speed. He's a very speed-oriented thrower. And realized a lot on momentum and speed. And, uh, not to sound mean, but not good position. Well, okay. No, actually, he hits really great positions. But his finish is something I personally uh, don't like. I don't know why he does that. I don't know if he has injury history or something. Uh, I know he, I think he has an injured groin right now. Um, but I don't. Uh, I forget when this was taken. I just got this off his Instagram, as you can see here. Um, but let's see. So he's here. Um, stays really grounded with his right foot. Keeps the disc is really far behind him. If anything, he kind of throws a little like Sandra Perkovich in many ways. Uh, or like a woman. Like, the disc is really far behind him. Uh, for a man. Usually, men try to keep it a little closer to the hip a little bit. Just because it weighs a little more. Uh, than a 1K. Um, but if you can get away with it, the further back you can get it, the better you'll off you'll be like, 
Uh, probably the two best men to do it are Vergili Selectna and um, Lars Riedel. Uh, most people try and copy like Gerd Cantor out the back, which I think is probably the best out the back. Um, but gets here. Really nice sweep. Good space between the knees. Kind of hops a little bit. So really good push off the left foot. But kind of floats. Like this is too much air time in my opinion. But gets a really nice pre-turn. So I like that. Alright, and then he's here. So really nice position. And, uh, oh sorry, let's back up a little. So sweep leg. One of the reasons why I don't like this style of the left leg usually is because then you kind of lose the angular momentum because the way I like to coach is personally, I like to see you turn then sink instead of just sink right away because then you lose the rotational velocity of your right side out the back. And I feel like that's what gets you turned and instead of and instead of that, he has to kind of hop a little up in the air. Um, and get a little too much air time because he doesn't get a lot of rotational energy from his right, uh, from his sweep leg. So, to counteract that, he kind of has to hop. So, he's, he's in the ground. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five frames. In my opinion, that's way too long and that's slow. So I think, in my opinion, he's losing a lot of distance there. All right. But, I mean, he's still moving really fast. So, and he's still accelerating really nice. So it doesn't really matter. I think he could even go faster, which is actually kind of crazy. Um, but, again, this is also a training throw. So, you know, this isn't obviously his comp speed throw. Okay, so... Let's get to the middle. So really nice stack here. Really nice. Lands in a really nice position, actually. I love the the open left foot here. Uh, instead of the left foot pointing that way, I tend to like it pointed where his is at. Um, towards this sector. So that's nice. And then this is the part that I don't like. <laughs> so right here. He doesn't really work the ground at all. And he kind of just hops up in the air. And I know this is wrong because this is what I used to do. <laughs> of course, I didn't throw 67 meters. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, he's really tall. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot to mention. I'll link his personal best height, weight, and um, uh, notable conscience in the video description. Um, but, yeah. Uh, let's get back to the video. So... Yeah, I would prefer him to work the ground instead of he kind of pushes a little bit. And then right here is basically off the ground and the disc is still super far back. So and then he kind of hops up in the air. Honestly, this looks <laughs> a lot like how Mac Wilkins used to release the disc. Except Mac Wilkins looked at the disc eh, kind of. Not really. Actually, this looks almost exactly like how Mac Wilkins used to throw. <laughs> Funny enough. Um, in the front, at least. Not the back and middle. No. Not, not even close. But, um... So... I personally don't like this. Because the second you're off the ground, you're starting to decelerate now. Because now you're not pushing against anything. Alright? And he always throws like this. I don't know if this is just an individualistic thing. Um, but personally, I think this is wrong. All right. You see all the greatest throwers ever. They always just turn and work the ground as long as possible. They at least stay on the ground until here. All right. Where he's off the ground. And then what, what he does really well is he's turned his right hip really well, but because he's turning the right hip, but not actually working the ground. If you play this in fat and like regular speed, it looks like that he is working the ground, like and that he gets his hip turned really fast, which it does. But turning the hip fast 
doesn't mean that you're not you're actually working the ground. It just means you're turning your hip fast. If anything, looking like you're going a little slower at the finish is actually better. You know, because now the imp now he is going around the same speed that the implement is going. All right, which is not good because you want the implement to be going faster than you. Then because the implement can always go faster than how um how fast you can go. All right, no matter what. All right, so you got to let it do that. And you do that by working the ground, all right? Because, I mean, you can't push against air unless you're an airbender, all right? So you got to you gotta push against the ground and rotate against uh, against the ground. I like to think about it like squashing a bug, all right? Uh, your right foot squashing a bug. I do like his block. Like, he holds his block very well. It's off the ground, but, I mean, people have thrown far like that, you know, a la Mac Wilkins. So, it's not like he's turning away from it. Well, nah, okay, he kind of does. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, this is one of the only things I, I would say is, like, really wrong. And he stops turning his right foot as well. So, you notice here, I actually just noticed this. So, when his left foot lands, he stops turning. So, his right foot stops there. And then waits for his left to ground. Whereas if he just kept turning his right foot, his left his left foot would ground faster, and he would get way more torque into it, uh, into his into the disc as well. So I think there's a couple of things you can take away from this of what not to do and what to do, and some unique things. But overall, he hits very good positions. So let's back it up. Like this is fine. I really like it. I mean, there's really not too many complaints. I just think he gets a little too much air time. But based on this kind of style that he has out the back, he kind of has to. Um, but he makes up for it with a good pre-turn, which speeds him up again. And then lands really torqued, really far, the disc really far back. My only complaint, really, um, like big complaint, is that he just should work the ground a lot more. But that's really it. I mean, he doesn't really work it at all. But if he can combine the right foot pushing against the ground at the speed that his right hip is turning, I mean, he's going to be golden. I think he I think he could be a 70-meter thrower if he just did that. I think that's the missing piece of what he's of how he throws. Honestly, cuz he has all the other attributes. He's super fast, he's obviously super athletic because you got to be to throw 67 meters. You got to be strong to throw 67 meters. All right. Um, you can't be weak and throw 67 meters. I mean, I've never heard of a weak discus thrower throwing that far. Uh, with a 2K at least. Um, actually, even with a high school weight, you can't either, honestly. Um, and you have to have good technique to throw far. So I'm not saying he has bad technique. I'm saying... In my opinion, he can really improve on his throw and really throw way further. I think he can join the 70-meter club. And I think he could be a bigger threat than what he is um, in World Champs and Olympics. Because I used to really like the way he threw until I studied it a little more. Because, I mean, it looks cool, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I just think he could throw way further. That's really it. So... I don't know. I think he's still a little young. Eh, actually, maybe not anymore. Um, he's probably in his 30s by now. Um, but, yeah, overall, I mean, really nice. Like, pretty good technique. I mean, it's solid. But if you notice, actually, even there, you can see that he decelerates. He decelerates on the release. Let um, me... Back that speed off a little. So you can see a little. This is half speed. You notice that little bit of deceleration. Maybe it goes a little too fast to see. But to the trained eye, you can see that. You can see that it decelerates because he's off the ground. So he's no longer accelerating it. So, I mean, he could be off the ground like here. That's when most people get off the ground on a reverse. 
because your hips are turned all the way. So if he stayed grounded during this position instead of up in the air, I think he could throw 70 meters. All right? Because, I mean, honestly, his technique kind of resembles Robert Harding in many ways. The one thing Robert Harding did was work the, the ground. Granted, he was a non-reverser, but even still. And also, this is a lesson why non-reversers are super helpful in training. Even if you're not going to non-reverse in comp, you should do non-reverses in training because they teach you how to work the ground. All right? <laughs> that's And to hold a block. And that's why non-reversers are so imperative to throwing far. All right? I've never heard of a good discus thrower or shot putter ever not practice non-reverses. All right? So, yeah. That's really it. Um, hope you guys have a happy New Year's. Uh, I'll be making a video tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, as well, to celebrate the new year. But, yeah. Uh, hope you guys learned something and really nice job. Um, I don't know why I just said that. I'm just used to just saying that to my athletes. Um, <laughs> but, overall, you know, I really like uh, this year, I think... You know, I'm not even going to get into that. You guys don't care about my year. Let's be real. Um, yeah. But, yeah, guys, hope you learned something. Again, I'll link his uh, personal best, height, weight, and uh, notable accomplishments in the video description. And hope you guys have had a really good 2023. And see you all next year.